Hello students, this is Mrs. Brister and you are watching a video lesson. It is expected while you watch this lesson that you take good and thorough Cornell notes. At the end, you will go ahead and make sure that you submit them to me as proof that you watch this video. Today's video is going to be on Washington Irving and his piece, The Devil and Tom Walker. First of all, let's start off with a little bit about Washington Irving. The Headless Horseman has thundered through readers' nightmares for nearly 200 years. Rip Van Winkle has been inspiring laughter for just as long. These characters, along with scores of others that populate his writing, helped make Washington Irving the first American writer to achieve an international reputation. Born when the nation was new and patriotism at its fiercest, Washington Irving was named for the country's first president. He began studying law at 16, but never showed much enthusiasm for it. He did, however, have a passion for writing, a playful mind, and keen powers of observation. I was always fond of visiting new scenes and observing strange characters and manners, he once wrote. In 1807, he began publishing light satirical pieces about New York politics, culture, and theater. In 1809, Irving penned A History of New York from the Beginning of Time through the End of the Dutch Dynasty, a satire of both historical texts and the local politics they chronicled. It was considered a comic masterpiece, but for a time, no one knew who had written it. The manuscript was said to have been left at an inn by an old lodger named Diedrich Knickerbocker. Knickerbocker was one of many eccentric narrators created by Irving who didn't sign his own name to his works until he was over 40. In 1815, Irving began traveling through Europe, remaining there for 17 years. With the encouragement of Sir Walter Scott, the author of Ivanhoe, and a fan of Irving's history, he began writing a series of stories that blended the legends of Europe with the tales he had heard while wandering as a young man through New York's Catskill Mountains and Hudson Valley. The stories, including both The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle appeared in 1820 as the sketchbook of Geoffrey Crayon, Gentleman. The collection was wildly successful. However, in 1824, Irving published Tales of a Traveler, which contained the devil and Tom Walker, and the book was not well received. In fact, the criticism was so harsh that Irving stopped writing fiction altogether. Irving returned to America in 1832 to live with his brother on the Sunnyside estate. He died at the age of 76 and was buried near the haunting ground of his famous horseman in New York's Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. An interesting side note, students, um, he actually inspired the name of the New York Knicks basketball team because of his character, Diedrich Knickerbocker. Irving was a master of satire, a literary device in which people, customs, or institutions are ridiculed with the purpose of improving society. In this passage, Irving pokes fun at a quarrelsome, complaining woman. Though a female scold is generally considered to be a match for the devil, yet in this instant she appears to have had the worst of it. Satire is often subtle, so as you read, watch for its indicators. Humor, exaggeration, absurd situations, and irony. One interesting thing about satire is that it doesn't just show up in literature. It actually shows up in a lot of other things that you may recognize. Let's take a look at some of these. Family Guy actually is satire. So are parodies such as Scary Movie and Austin Powers and The Simpsons and even the rapper Lil B who pokes fun at the exaggerations that other rappers may have. Another concept that Washington Irving uh, goes through very well is that of imagery. He develops his characters and establishes mood through imagery. That is, words and phrases that appeal to the five senses. Listen to this passage from The Devil and Tom Walker. There lived near this place a meager, miserly fellow of the name of Tom Walker. He had a wife as miserly as himself. They lived in a forlorn-looking house that stood alone and had an air of starvation. Now, if you notice from that passage, 
you can definitely tell that Tom Walker and his wife oh, do not get along. They seem miserable together. And that is actually one of the parts of the satire that Irving brings out. Besides looking at satire and imagery in Washington Irving's The Devil and Tom Walker, it's also important that you know these following vocabulary words. It is highly suggested that you go ahead and pause this video so that you can go ahead and get these words down in your Cornell notes. Go ahead and press pause now. Before you begin reading, it is important to understand a little bit of the background of The Devil and Tom Walker. The story of Tom Walker is a variation on the legend of Faust, a 16th century magician and astrologer who is said to have sold his soul to the devil for wisdom, money, and power. Washington Irving reinvented the tale, setting it in the 1720s in an area of New England settled by the Quakers and Puritans. In Irving's comic retelling of the legend, the writer satirizes people who present a pious public image as they sell their soul for money. It is also important to note that although you have seen examples of satire that is laugh out loud funny like Family Guy for instance, The Devil and Tom Walker is a lot more subtle, especially since it was meant for an audience uh, that is a lot older than you. So as you read, make sure that you understand that everything in this story, the satire, is much more subtle. You are not going to be laughing, um, and you're going to have to pick apart the text before you read. Please keep that in mind. You are now done with your video notes. It is highly suggested that you go ahead and complete your Cornell Notes reflection so that you don't forget about it later. Please make sure that you turn it into me uh, as soon as you can. Thank you.